So we're live again. So hello, how are you? Whoever you, wherever you are in South America, in Spain, in Europe. Okay, this is Monica Stoker from El Blog para Aprender Inglés. And uh, here with me again, Craig, Craig Williams. Hello. Del Inglés. Welcome to Facebook Live. It's really good to see you. Yeah, and if, I think nobody's watching yet, <laughs> but... But for the replay, no? Okay, for the replay. Give them time. They'll the, come. They'll come. People will introduction, come. Introduction. Introduction. Okay, so um, I'm going to just put these banners there. And today we're going to talk about what is the topic for today? We're going to talk about daily routines, and we have 15 wonderful phrasal verbs that Monica's put together, 15 phrasal verbs that are commonly used in English to talk about daily routines, things you do on a regular basis in English, um, and how can you speak about your routines using these phrasal verbs. So it's, it's, I'm looking forward to it. This is going to be a very useful session on Facebook Live. Hi, Gemma. Gemma's here. Yeah, thank you, Hema, for coming. <laughs> so I was going to say that um, I chose this topic because I, I noticed there are two things that happens with phrasal verbs. The first thing is that most people hate them. Like, like this is something horrible that you have to learn, tedious, they're difficult to learn. And I want to say that they shouldn't be like that because... It's just part of the vocabulary. I remember uh, that the first time they told me, do you know any phrasal verbs? I said, what? Phrasal verbs? <laughs> what are those phrasal so verbs? So you knew them, but you didn't know you knew exactly. them. Exactly. I didn't know the name. And I said, what? The, the first time, I don't know, I was shocked because I, I didn't know what that was. And I knew them because I had learned them with the vocabulary. I just was using them. And that's the way I think you should learn them. It's just using them, not think of them as a separate horrible thing to learn. Yeah. yeah? So there's the number one. And number two is that they're very, very common. And that's another thing in colloquial speech, because people think, no, maybe this is not, mm, we're never going to use it. Well, maybe you don't use them, but you're going to hear them very often especially when talking to native speakers. Native speakers, they always use phrasal verbs. It's, it's very, very common, and that's why it's important to learn them. And I was watching some videos, and I got the idea, what about daily routines? In daily mm -hmm. routines, there are many phrasal verbs. So some of them, I'm going to start showing them. Um, We're going Another to thing start. about phrasal verbs is really important to think about the object. Where you're going to put the object with a phrasal verb, because oh, you know yeah. that a phrasal verb has the main verb and it has a particle, which is sometimes an adverbial particle or sometimes a preposition. But that doesn't matter. There are two words basically, and these two words sometimes you cannot separate separate them. They must stay together, and sometimes you can separate them and you can put the object in the middle. So it's important to know that. And one problem I see with students sometimes is that they confuse where they can put the object. So we'll look at that today as we're explaining these phrasal verbs and we'll explain where you can put the object, if you can put it in the middle or after. Can you use it? Where can you put it? And we'll look at that today as well. Okay. Hi, Hi Sarah. Rafa. Hi, Rafa. Sarah. Yeah, we just saw them. Uh, yes, and that, that is a very common problem. And, and then again, I would say that more than a studying that, you learn them by using them. You know yeah. where to put the order because it's just familiar. You just know where to, I'm, I'm, I'm sure no native speaker starts studying a book saying, well, now the object goes in the middle. No, <laughs> you just use them. That's what I yeah. want you to do. I want you to use them. And if you use them, you know where to put the object, okay? So, so while you're watching us, why don't you practice in the chat box, practice writing and using these phrasal verbs after we explain them to get used to finding out how you can use them and improve your English with these phrasal verbs. So try yeah. writing sentences, example sentences, as we explain them. 
Okay, so, so the first one is going to be for Craig. And this is a very common one. Very common. Everybody knows this one. So, Craig, can you see? Wake them? up. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Wake up. Yeah, I was yeah, sleeping. Wake, wake up. Come on. Wake up, Craig. <laughs> wake up. Where are you? Where are so you? this is an example. I was sleeping. This is an example of a separable phrasal verb. You can wake up someone or you can wake someone up. So you can say, wake your dad up or wake up your dad or wake him up. But you cannot say, wake up him. Mm -hmm. So when the object is a personal pronoun, you cannot have it at the end. That's why it's tricky and that's why it's confusing. So how do you say wake up in Spanish? Despertarse, no? Yes. Despertarse. What time do you usually wake up? Monica. I usually wake up at 7 or 7:15. Seven and wow. you what time do, what time do you usually wake up? Usually it's around eight o'clock unless I have a lot of work. And if I'm very, very busy, then I wake up early. I wake up about seven or half past seven. And on weekends I usually wake up later. I wake up about half past eight at weekends. Hello, Monse. I used to Hi, it was a student of mine in Sassenach. Phrasal verb. What a nightmare. Nightmare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I, we were just saying. Uh, okay, That's we were, why you know, we're yeah. speaking about them because it's they are nightmare. tricky. Don't think of them as a nightmare. There's one thing I want to say because I have another phrasal verb that is very common, but most people confuse wake up with get up. Uh, it's not the same. Because I, when I say levantarse y despertarse, that's not the same. So when I say, what time do you usually get up? One thing is to wake up. I, I was thinking, what time do you usually wake up? No, I usually wake up a little bit earlier. I mm. wake up like half past six or something like that. Wow. Uh, depends on the day. And then I say, oh, I'll go back to sleep again. And then it's the time I get up, which is different from waking up. So it's just levantarse, get up. So one, what of, one of my one of my pleasures, I love to do this on Sundays. For example, when I don't have to get up early, I wake up probably around half past seven, eight o'clock, and then I read in bed. So I read for maybe half an hour, and then I get up. Exactly. And that exactly. half an hour is so sweet when you wake when you wake <laughs> up and you you lay in bed and you read or you listen to the radio or listen to some music and you just rest and, because and it's that, Sunday and you don't need to get up early. Exactly, that's very nice uh, when you don't need to get up early. Get up. What time? So the question, the, the normal question with this verb is, what time do you usually get up? This is a very common. I got up. Past tense. I got up uh, at seven o'clock today. I got up at seven. Um, another comment about this, uh, you, you are going to be great in charge of saying exactly where the pronoun goes or the object goes, <laughs> because yes. uh, I am not very good at that. I, I just play by ear, well, but I well, don't you, have an explanation. Usually it's intransitive. You usually just say, I get up. So there's no yeah. object. There's no, there's no object. I get up. What time do you get up? However, you can have an object when you get someone up. So you physically go into their bedroom and you, first of all, you wake them up. Notice yeah. that them, the pronoun is in the middle. So it's separable. You can separate yeah. the phrasal verb. So you wake them up and then you can get them up, which means that you force them to get out of bed. Mm -hmm. So maybe children need their parents or one of their parents to get them up in the morning. But that pronoun must go in the middle. You can't yeah. say get up them. No, 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 it doesn't. Sound That's right. the important thing to remember. So get the children up or they'll be late for school. Okay. So get up and wake up are very easy and common phrasal verbs. Many, many times we use these phrasal verbs. Everybody knows them. This is, but this one is a funny one. I, I, it's, it's your turn. The next one is now is your turn. Yeah, my uh, students, my students always laugh in the classroom when I say this word. I don't know why they laugh. But when I say put on, 
I don't know why they laugh. Maybe maybe you can tell me. But we had before <laughs> we had before get up with the verb get, and you also get dressed after mm -hmm. you get up. Yeah. Okay. So when you get dressed, what do you do? You put on your clothes. So you can put on a shirt, you can put on a hat, you can put on your glasses, you can put on your trousers, your shoes. And the opposite, of course, is take off. Take off. So well, before you go to bed, you take off your clothes. In the morning after you get up, you put on your clothes. There are other meanings of, of put on. You, you can use it in a different way, which means to imitate somebody. You can put on a voice, which mm. means you can like speak like an American. You know what I mean? That's awesome. I'm putting on an American voice. Pretender. Mm -hmm. But that's not so common. The most common use of put on is to put something on your body. Yeah, the, the reason why people laugh, because in Spanish from Spain, uh, it sounds like put on, like prostitute, no? But, but I always say, <laughs> because everybody starts laughing, oh, oh, oh. I say, well, but there's a big difference in pronunciation here. And the difference is that in English, the consonants are very important. And in Spanish, the vowel sound is very important. So it's not put on, it's put on. It's like, yeah, you, you just heard Craig. He says yeah. put on. He puts <laughs> lots of emphasis in the consonants. It's B and T and N, no? So that's why it doesn't sound like put on because that's like, that, that's Spanish. So the, you have to pay attention to that. Pay attention to the sound. Because if you put the emphasis on the consonants, you're going to speak much more native. <laughs> because this is the main difference between Spanish and English, the consonant sound. Yeah. Very, very so pay attention and to that, and it, it, wouldn't, it won't sound so awful like puto. <laughs> yeah. But everybody's true that everybody remembers this verb. Uh, they don't have trouble remembering, at least people from Spain, Spanish from Spain. I don't know the rest. That's because that because it makes them laugh. They make a connection in their mind, yeah. and yeah. they can maybe yeah. if you if you make a picture in your mind, and the most ridiculous, stupid, funniest picture you can think of is the easiest to remember. Yeah. So if it helps you to remember this verb by thinking of a prostitute getting dressed, yeah, and putting on clothes. Fine, yeah. you remember the word. That's another yeah. phrasal verb you've learned. So try to make those connections in your brain and the words will be easier to remember. One more thing before we move to the next one, the separability. This is another separable, separable phrasal verb. So you can put your shoes on or put on your shoes. However, when it changes to a pronoun, it's only in the middle. So put them on. No se puede decir put on them. No. Put them so on. So when it's a pronoun, it must go in the middle of the phrasal verb. Okay, Rafa is saying something that I was thinking about. Um, Rafa, the takes us as a few weeks with the airport's vocabulary. The plane takes off. Yeah. I, when you said take off, I thought of that because to take off is clothes. You can take off clothes, but you can also say despegar is, a, is an airplane. Okay. Uh, it's so a really the, good example, Raph, of a phrasal yeah. verb that's not separable because you cannot say take the plane off. No, <laughs> no, it's true. But you can say take your shirt off. Yes. So when it has the meaning of quitar ropa, it's separable. When it has the meaning of despegar, you cannot separate the particle from the verb. The plane takes off. You the cannot say, take, take the plane off. No, take the plane off. Take the plane. Take the planes take on me. Take the plane off me. No, no. Not yeah, because it, actually, take off means to remove. To remove. That's why take, well, take off is, is, is like a remove. Take, you take something off. You remove something, no? Mm -hmm. And the same happens with the plane because it, it's flying, it's going away, it's removing <laughs> itself, it's removing itself. Okay, let's see. Um, the, let me go back to, I think this one is for me, come over. Come over and uh, Craig added come round. Come round is more British English. 
I think. Yeah, it means the more, same. Means yeah. the same though. Yeah. Um, it's, it means the same, but it's more British English because I never heard come around. I, I to come over. It's funny because this is something like you think oh, come over. Well, you say very often about phrasal verbs that there's a real meaning and a figurative meaning, and there's always he come over, come over me, like like get yourself over me. No, that's the real meaning. No. But when we're talking in a figurative way, we mean to visit someone. It's funny, no? Why don't you come over, for example? Now with the COVID, we don't have many guests, so we don't use this verb too often. But it's, it's usually an invitation. They, they are coming over. They are coming over. That means they are coming to visit me. They are coming to my place. So that only with these two with this verb and this preposition, I am indicating, come to my place, come over. That's it, come to my place. Uh, in Spanish, we would say, ¿Por qué no vienes a casa? ¿Por qué no vienes a mi casa? O ¿Por qué no vienes a casa? So it's funny that only with these two, the, this verb and this preposition, you are saying like uh, a big idea, no? <laughs> visit, to visit me. Why don't you come to visit? And why don't come around? There's also expression. What goes around comes. It's in this, isn't there an expression? Goes yeah, what around. goes around comes around. Yeah. What, what you do to other people comes back yeah. to you, comes yeah. around to you. Yeah. Which yeah. is calm, which is karma, really. It's karma. Yeah. If you're nice to people, then you will have nice things happening to you. So why don't you come around also? I could say, why don't you come around? Okay, yeah. the, you have, I, well, Craig lives in Valencia and I live in Madrid. Not, not so, so easy for me to come around to you, Monica. No, it's a long, long it's way to come. Easy. <laughs> it's not very easy because it's too far away. But if you live, if you happen to live near, you can say that. In fact, well, now I just said that it's not very common anymore because you're not supposed to be with your friends all the time. <laughs> and, and if you are with your friends, it's better to be outside, not inside the house. No? Okay, so come. And it's also it's also inseparable. You cannot separate the uh, particle from the verb. So come over for uh, dinner, come over for tea, come around for a cup of tea, come around for a drink. You cannot say come you round or come you over. <laughs> oh, no, no. It's, it's in it's intransitive. So just come over. Just come over if you're in the neighborhood or if you're – I live near the beach. If you're going to the beach, come around for coffee. That's a very mm. common colloquial expression. But um, I was going to say that when you say it in a different way with the, with the object in a different place, it sounds so strange to me that it just you wouldn't say it. So mm – -hmm. You, I don't know. You have to make up the the that sentence because it's just invented. The, you cannot say that. No. Nope. Come over. Why don't you come over? What did you say? Why don't you come over? For no, coffee. Why, uh, no, 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 no. But you you made an example. You this there was an, an example, example of, of what you cannot say. The incorrect use. Come you over. Come you over, for example. You know, I never heard that. So you would have to. Really think about it. Come you over. Yep. No. This one, the next one, I like this one because it's very, very common and it has yes. nothing to do. This is for you, Craig. It has nothing to do. The, 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 the phrase of really has nothing to do with the, with the meaning. No, hang out. Hang is colgar. So it's yeah. like, oh, hang. Yeah. <laughs> well, it has, it has two meanings that I can, yeah. I can think of. You can hang out the washing. Yeah, well, kind of, this is physical. Ropa. Yeah, that's the, the, that's, physical. that's the literal, literal meaning because you're taking the wet clothes and you're hanging mm. them out, out to dry. Yeah. So uh, don't forget to hang out the washing before you go to work. Hang out. The more colloquial expression, which is um, not literal, is to pasar el rato, to hang out with someone. For example, I like to hang out with some friends and have a meal and a glass of wine to hang out with people, to hang out in a bar, to hang out 
on the street and talk for a while is just to be with people. It's a very informal way to say uh, estar con compañía or estar con gente, to be with friends, to be with family, to hang out with friends, pasar el rato. Yeah, but in Spanish, we don't use it like that. And that's why it's so confusing because I think that not many people understand this. This to hang out is in Spanish is, for example, just to go out. Because uh, the idea for me to hang out, who do you hang out with? Huh? Who do you, These days, I don't hang out with anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I, hang out with, I hang out with myself. <laughs> be careful of the past tense because it's irregular the past of hang is hung h-u-n-g so yeah. last week i hung out with some mates some friends sada has a nice example i like to hang out with my friends that's very good yeah, no, that's the, the, yes yes this is this is a good example but the oh i love the dog <laughs> this is a small dog there uh, I I wanted to say that that in Spanish we would say something like con quién sales con quién vas por ahí but not spend time because hang out can also be not necessarily to go out with someone. It's just, no, you can you can hang out playing video games. Exactly, I'm hanging out with them. So in Spanish, there's not a perfect correlation between the translation and the and the meaning in English. Because and it can go very well with the phrasal verb before. You can phone your friend or text your yeah. friend and say, hey, what are you doing? Are you doing anything? No, I'm, I'm not doing anything. Why don't you come over and we'll yeah. hang out? Yeah. The, we'll hang out it. and drink, we'll drink a few beers and we'll hang out together and play video yeah, games. But you wouldn't say that in Spanish. You say, why don't you come over? Yes, ¿por qué no vienes? Y, bueno, well, pasamos un rato, but it's, uh, it's implied in the action, so you don't have a verb for that. Um, I think, at least, if somebody you has an idea. Yeah. That's why it's difficult to translate, because I, I don't know, I never know how to translate that verb. The pasar el rato, yeah, but it sounds like um, redundant. Be it sounds be redundant. Together. Another English expression that's similar is be together, but, be you, together, wouldn't say, but you wouldn't say, hey, no. come over, let's be together. No, no, you formal. wouldn't say it. That's very formal, no? Yeah. Uh, no, pasamos keep, el rato. keep me company. Keep me company, maybe. Pasamos el rato. I, sí, ¿por qué no vienes y uh, jugamos? Or you, you always say something specific y nos tomamos una, una cerveza or something like that. But you don't say, ¿por qué no vienes y pasamos el rato? No, I, I never said that at least. Okay, now I have um, the next one. Um, uh, this one has two meanings, actually. At least one, the most common meaning of this verb is to do exercise, workout. For example, uh, I go to the gym and I work out uh, every every Wednesday, for example, one to work out. Or I never work out. <laughs> Lately, I never work out. I just go for a walk. I really working out. Uh, my my just my walks are the working out. I don't. I never work out. Okay, to work you out. Never, you never work out. Not anymore. I used to go to a gym in the past and all that. And now, after the COVID, I just uh, decided to just go for a walk. But I go for a walk, uh, long walks, so, uh, five kilometers or something like that. That's but good. not working out, like specifically doing exercise there with uh, weights or dumbbells and all these things. No. Do you work out? Not anymore. The same as you. I used to. But... Um, this week I bought a folding bicycle. Oh, oh you finally so bought it. I finally bought it, which means I can travel to my language school on the bicycle. I don't have to use the bus. And I rode the bike up and down the beach. And my last bike got stolen. Yeah. Um, and I bought the folding bike because I can keep it in the flat. And now I'm using the folding bike. It's not a workout. Workout, you can also use as a noun, a workout. It's not really a hard physical workout, but it's really nice. It's really pleasant to to ride along the beach and ride around Valencia because Valencia is very flat. So, yeah, yeah but, uh, working out. Yeah, working out is like, in this case, you take it as, as a replacement, a <laughs> substitution for working out. Something because for me working out sometimes is boring. It's like I like uh, it's sometimes it's like studying phrasal verbs. Like <laughs> who wants to do that? 
But if you want to, if you, if you do it uh, without noticing, like riding a bike, uh, swimming, or going for a walk, you're also working out, not in the same way as in the gym, but you do work out. So uh, let me see. Rafa says for uh, hang out, echar un rato, echamos un rato. Yeah, it could be. That's one, one a Spanish expression, I suppose, but because I don't think in South America they say that. Mm -hmm. Then we have uh, Sasena says uh, physical exercise. Physical exercise. Okay. Yes, working out is physical exercise. Um, and what's the sec what's the second meaning? You said there was another meaning. Ah, there's another meaning. Yes. Mm. There's the other meaning is, let me put it back here, um, to solve something. Um, work out. I have, uh, let, let me think of an example. Um, if you go to eat with people and there's a bill and there's six of you, you have to work out how many, how exactly. much money calculate. each person pays. Calculate. Yeah, calculate. Calculate. I was thinking, no, to, I said to solve, but solve is more to figure out. It can be to, also it can be to solve. Yeah, the yeah, detective yeah. the detective worked out who yeah, murdered work, the butler. Yeah. Butler, yeah. Yeah, but uh, work out. I cannot work out a solution here. For example, you can say that it's difficult to work it out because there are too many factors involved. So, but I tried, um, and finally I came up with a solution to work out. To work out also means to solve a problem, nothing to do with exercise. And what is this? What is the origin of this meaning? No, it's like you have to work, and then out something comes out. What, what is the origin? Because it's, it's not connected. Work as a physical exercise, and then to solve something with to solve something. I with I never thought of it. It's like you said at the beginning, Monica. I think like native speakers don't think of why the phrasal verb like what's the origin? Where does it come from? <laughs> No, no, you don't think, but I don't you, think it's that to work and then out is the solution. So you work to a conclusion, yeah. you work it to a final, a final outcome, a final thing. Yeah, that's, There's that's, the famous Beatles song, We Can Work It Out by the Beatles. Oh, we can, we can but work in, it out. in yeah. this case, um, we can work it out, it means that we can fix a problem. Yes, exactly. That's a good way to explain it. We can fix the problem. And when it has this meaning of calculate or fix the problem, you can separate it. So you can work the problem out or work the bill out. Hmm. When it has the previous meaning of do exercise, it is not separable. So you, you work out. People. That's it. You work out. You, you can't work say work your body out or no. work out your body. No, it's just you, I, I'm I'm working out tomorrow. Mm. I can't see you for coffee. Yeah. Okay. It says origin of phrasal verb. Rafa says, "What is the origin of phrasal verb?" I. This is Germanic. Look, English is a Germanic language, so all these are Germanic uh, verbs that they're, they're colloquial speech, and basically the Latin words. The French, the Latin, all the other words came later uh, to, to add. They were added later with the different invasions of Normans and in the Middle Ages. They brought these languages, Latin and French and all that, was brought later into this Germanic uh, language. So that's why there's many times there's a, a formal verb and informal. And the informal is the phrasal verb. And the formal verb is the Latin verb. So, for example, in the word makeup, que quiere decir maquillaje, but also inventar, you have makeup as a, as a phrasal verb, and invent as a, um, invent is the Latin word. So it's very, that's the origin of the, the it's just the Germanic tribes that in, that exactly. name all these words. They were it's Germanic, not, they, were, it's, they it, speak like that. It's not as Rafa suggests that maybe the British people were bored. It's no. not Rafa, a group like a committee of <laughs> professors at Cambridge University who no. thought, I know what we can do <laughs> to make these students really angry. <laughs> we can invent these phrasal verbs and they'll never learn English. No, that's not the reason. But 
actually we did a podcast about this back in yes. September called um a brief history of phrasal verbs Rafa if you're interested in the origin it's episode 331 so inglespodcast.com slash 331 it explains what Monica just said but in more detail the origin of phrasal verbs and what's interesting when French came into some French words came into the English language French was a very sophisticated upper class language and they gave us lots of full verbs so if you use the full verb as Monica said it was more formal and more educated and if you use the phrasal verb you were more like lower class and working class and that's still true today phrasal verbs are more informal whereas the full verbs are usually for more formal language, formal writing and formal conversation. That's still true today. Yeah, but it is, it is true today, but you have to think that most of the time people are in informal conversations. That's why they're important because you're not, when you speak to your friends or when you speak to colleagues at, at work, you're not really talking in a sophisticated way and just you, you just plain speaking like in the morning oh, what do you do this this kind of talking in spanish we do the same mm -hmm. so that that i think uh, that's why they're important that you cannot really ignore them because the the, the good thing would be oh they're informal lower classes uh, speak this uh, use these verbs so let's forget about that no because they i think they're just much more used than formal verbs and, and colloquial speech, for sure, for sure. Rafa, Rafa <laughs> said, I don't imagine the Queen Elizabeth using mm. phrasal verbs. Well, here's your homework, Rafa. Mm. Go to Netflix, watch The Crown on Netflix, and see if you can hear the Queen using any phrasal verbs. I think she does. And I think, I think she does. Well, I think the royal family probably not hang out like no. I'm hanging out with Prince Charles or I'm ha no. no. <laughs> But they and probably they do. do use do. some phrasal verbs because yeah. they're so common in modern they're English. So common. That's why it's they are they are important. That's why I insist on this because it's, even if you don't use them, you have to because I don't I cannot remember anybody when at the time I learned English that I was very young. I cannot remember anybody saying, for example, invent. Nobody said invent, and I said, "Whoa, it's so easy, invent. Why do you say makeup?" And, 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 and that's why I know that these Latin verbs are not so common in colloquial speech. Now I have, here I have another, um, uh, yes, another, okay. this is Let's, for you, Greg, I think, yes, because I did work out. Uh, Let's look at the idiomatic meaning and the literal meaning. So the literal meaning is when something fits in something. For example, these glasses fit, whoops, in this case so if i put my glasses in here then they fit in the case so that's the physical literal meaning of fit in there's an idiomatic meaning more of an idiom is where like you feel comfortable for example you go to a party to hang out with your friends but they have different interests they like video games and you like tennis and you have nothing in common, and you don't fit in. How would you say that in Spanish? Encajar. Me en encajar. los dos sentidos, in both meanings. No, in one, it, there's two meanings here. Fit is, well, fit also has the meaning of to be in, in to be fit, start in forma, no? But fit also means um, caber. For example, I always say that when caber. I go to fit, when I go on a trip and I make the suitcase, everything fits perfectly. But when I in come the, in back, the suitcase, yeah. Yeah. When when I come back, I have a problem. The oh, the, the, I say, well, what happened? The things grew, so I they don't fit in the suitcase. It's the same because you because you bought presents. <laughs> yes, usually. Ah, I have and, some advice for you. I have a tip. Yeah. What is the tip? When you get old clothes clothes that you want to throw away keep them save them for your holiday so all the clothes you want to get rid of there's another phrasal verb to get rid of this all the clothes you want to get rid of you take on holiday in your suitcase you throw your clothes away when they get dirty and then oh, you have room in your suitcase for all your present to fit in the case yeah 
but I don't wear, I don't usually wear clothes I want to get rid of. <laughs> That's a problem. <laughs> because if I want to wear, get rid of them, it means that I don't like them anymore, so I won't wear them. So, so, that's your practical point of view, but I'm not very practical in this part of view. Well, lately, because of the COVID, I don't worry too much. But in the past, I was very worried about this. No? Fit. Okay, so fit is caber. But fit yes. means encajar. And that, and here, fitting is very, I, I don't know in Spanish if we say that so much. Because we say, uh, for example, when you go with a group of people, and you don't fit in, um, you say, well, no encajo, no, no. It's like that group of people has nothing to do with you. But there's not a very good expression, no encajar. I don't, don't feel, like No estás cómodo or cómoda. Yeah, you, no don't feel, you don't feel comfortable. You don't, you don't feel, feel comfortable. comfortable. Yeah, Rafa says, yes, this is good. Sentirse cómodo. If, yeah. you, if you don't fit in, you're not comfortable, right? This is exactly what I, what, what, what I was looking for because encajar is too formal also. It's too formal. Mm. Uh, um, no, I went, and sometimes this is very annoying, no? That you yeah. go to a place and, and uh, a student just told me a story that she has a, ga um, a, a dog that is a galgo, but it's um, a greyhound. The, yeah, a greyhound. Yeah, greyhound is the name in English. But is uh, half breed, so it's not completely uh, a greyhound. And she went to meet some other greyhounds in the park, and she said, "We didn't fit in there. The other dogs didn't like my dog, and I didn't like those people, and we left." <laughs> and it's because the dog was not mm, the same class. <laughs> yeah, the same. <laughs> <laughs> didn't fit it's in the a greyhound. pure <laughs> with the pure greyhounds yeah yeah fit in uh, is also an example of a phrasal verb that is inseparable so you cannot yeah. separate the verb and the particle so you just say i don't i didn't fit in with this crowd of people i didn't fit in with this group or the book doesn't fit in the bookcase for example or my glasses don't fit in Okay, so you cannot separate the particle and the verb fit in. Okay, good. Uh, and I remember fit, a lot of F there, fit, not, not feet, because that, that's P's. Yes, yeah, fit, <laughs> so, fit. So like sit and yeah. it. Exactly. Um, that's, this is for me, get on it, with. And I okay. like this first verb because uh, in Spanish, well, we have one one verb that is apañarse. Well, I don't. I think it's the Spanish from Spain, more than in other countries. Um, but to get on with uh, means uh, how? For example, um, Craig has a new project, and I want to know how she's doing with that project, and said, "How are you getting on with the new project?" Right. So how are you getting on with that? Is, is it working? Is it not working? Yeah, so this, getting on really well. I'm getting on really well. Yeah, it's just, this this working, it's working. This, so, so it's a little bit difficult to remember because you have there really one verb and two prepositions. Get on with, get on with whatever you're going to say. Project, new job, how are you getting on with a new job? And it also has a second meaning, but this is more British. I think, and it's to get on with someone. Yes, like Gemma said that. in the chat room, uh, bien con alguien. Okay, well, exactly. Gemma, yeah. That's the second meaning. Mm, okay, Gemma, that's the second, another meaning. I was referring to the one of apañarse de con algo, no? To, to so, llevarse bien, do you get on with um, your friends uh, at the school? Do you get on with your colleagues? Uh, I don't get, the opposite would be I don't get on um the americans they say more get along with than get on so get yeah. along is american and get on is british so the this uh, so how are you getting on now what about the particles here this is very complex <laughs> what do we do with the, all these uh objects and where do we place the object here 
Well, uh, as as the same as fit in, get yeah. on is not separable. So you get on with someone. Like I, I get on with my sister. I cannot say I get my sister on. And no. I cannot say I get on my sister with. It has to be the object has to come after the prepositions. So I get on with my boss. I get on really well with my boss. Or I get on really badly with my boss. You can get on well or get on badly. But the object is always after the prepositions. And what about this example? We're... <laughs> well, this we're... meaning, good, Rafa, this is adelantar. To get on yeah. with something is empathar or adelantar. Oh, that, that's true. I didn't, I didn't think of that. Yeah. I didn't think of that. That, that is true. So, stop so... Proca procrastinating. Stop drinking coffee. Stop looking at Facebook. Get, get on with your work. Get on get with, with, with your what work. you're doing. Yeah, do your work. There, Venga. Yeah, meaning. Different meaning. Venga, yeah. <laughs> Getting uh, a different meaning. Um, okay. Let's go with uh, this is for you. Try out. Great. Yes. I said Try before out. I told you about my new bicycle that I'm very pleased with. Um, mm -hmm. But before I bought my bicycle, I went to the bike shop because it was you know, quite expensive. It wasn't cheap. You know, it wasn't like 10 or 20 euros. It was quite expensive. So I didn't want to buy the bicycle before I tested it. So I said to the man in the shop, can I try the bike out before I buy it? So to try something out means to test. And did you notice I put the object in the middle? So this is a phrasal verb that you can separate. Separate. Try it out. Try the bike out or try out the bike. What you cannot say is try out it. <laughs> so when you have it, when you have that pronoun, you must have it in the middle. So that could be for a computer. Can I try your your laptop out? Can I try out the laptop? Can I test it? Can I play with it? Can I try out your camera? Can I try out your car? It means to test. Okay. I, I wanted, Rafa made a couple of comments there. I have an anecdote with makeup. Um, well, but you, I would have to send you a link and you tell us the anecdote because it's difficult unless you write it. And he says also, you buy too much, Monica, because I said that I never take clothes. <laughs> well, lately I don't buy too much, but yes, it's true. Uh, in the past, maybe I was buying too much. I cannot take clothes um, that I'm going to get rid of. Like, like Craig said, you go on a trip and you take, uh, but Craig, I'm, I'm buying too much, and Craig is polluting the world because he gets rich of the <laughs> No, well, I usually, we, well, when we traveled, we went to poor countries. Like we traveled a lot ah, in Africa, we traveled a lot in Asia. Okay. And believe me, there are a lot of people who are very I, happy with the clothes yeah. I give them, people who are ah. living on the street. And, you know, I give them my dirty t shirt, they're very happy. <laughs> they have a t shirt, it's dirty, no. and they're happy. Okay. So oh, this is the. Uh, I, How I, do you say "llevarse uh, mal"? Says Gemma, to get on badly. With to get someone. on, or, yeah, get on is the British. Um, and then Edgar is asking, "Get along with?" I said, "Get along with" is American, yeah. and it's the same. It's the same as "get on with" that is British. Mm -hmm. So. Um, and how do you say your mal? I don't remember the vaccines. Of COVID, we're tried out on animals. Um, try it out. Oh, that's true. Try it out, experimentar. Yeah, because uh, uh, try out means also experimentar. Test. 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 It is experimentar. So, yes, correct, Rafa. Uh, and yeah, and Gemma, it's um, get, get on badly. Yeah. Yeah, get on badly. Okay, so we have try it out. Pick out. Now, pick out. That's this yours. Is, pick out. Pick out is another. Uh, this is the first word for choosing to choose. No. Um, so, for example, when I am going to get dressed in the morning, I uh, pick out the clothes. I, I usually what I do is I pick out my clothes the day before because I don't want to be in a hurry. So I, I, I choose what I'm going to wear. I pick out 
no? So peak and out. That's, that's very graphic because peak, the, the, the grab to grab and out, out of a selection of clothes, no? I pick out some clothes, I put it on a sofa, and then the next day I just take them and get dressed. And this is the, the meaning of this verb. Um, and, and then um, there's, there's an, I don't think there's a second meaning. I don't, I, I just think it's to choose. I don't think of, is there a second meaning for this verb? There's a, there's a little, uh, there's, no. there's the meaning, well, it's, is it the same? Well, if you have like a, a, a snail, mm -hmm. caracol, snail. and they, they give you a pin and you have to pick out the snail from the. Ah, oh, well, the, this is the, the literal meaning. Yeah. yeah, to pick out something yeah. from inside. Yeah. yeah, to pick something yeah. out. But seleccionar or, or elegir yeah, is probably it, more useful. Yes, to choose, to choose. And to then choose. what about the object? Where do we place the object here? Um, it can go in the middle or it can go after. So you can pick your clothes out or pick a shirt out or pick out a shirt, pick out your clothes. Yeah. So okay. it can go in the middle or it can go after. Okay. However, with the next phrasal verb, it is not separable. Mm. So we're going to see an example now of a phrasal verb that you cannot separate. Grow up. Be careful of grow because it is irregular. The past of grow is grew. The same sound as you or two. So I grew up in London. I cannot say grew I up in London. <laughs> so it's a phrasal verb that you cannot separate. And another confusion with this is it's a phrasal verb because you have the particle up, which in this case makes sense because when you grow up, vas arriba, you get taller. But people grow up. Plants, trees, and animals grow. So there's Don't no grow. particle. I and that's a, that's a mistake I hear quite often. Yes. Trees they grow. grow. They don't grow up. Uh, <laughs> plants and flowers grow. The flowers are growing in the spring. Sorry, hit the microphone. Yeah, so the flowers are growing, but they don't grow up. We grow up because we're people. Yeah, but in, in Spanish, the translation is also criarse. And, and that's why you have to think about that, no? Grow up is criarse. And plants, no se crían las plantas. The plants grow, crecen, but no se crían. So me crié, for example, me crié. I grew up in Madrid, or I grew up in London. I grew up... Uh, where, where, did you grow, where did you grow up? I grew up in Chile, and I grew up in the States because I was very young when I moved to the States. And then I moved to, I moved to all over the world. Venezuela, the Netherlands. And then I ended up, another first of all, acaba, I ended up here in, in, in Spain. But I was mm -hmm. very young also when I uh, came to Spain. So grow up. To grow up is only for people, like uh, Craig said. Don't don't forget that because I hear that often too. Uh, the plant grew grew up. <laughs> I said no, the plants don't grow up. No, the plants grow. The uh, plants just grow. They don't grow up. Okay. Um, no. The next one is tricky. The next one's very tricky. Uh, very difficult. The next one is for me. Yeah. Uh, ah, lie down. Oh, this is tricky. Uh, it's true because lie down, lie down is tricky because we confuse this verb with lay. So lay one is lie is tumbarse, okay, and lay is colocar, okay. But but then this is the problem: is the past tense of lie is lay. It's lay. <laughs> And that's why it's confusing because um, they the the meaning is not clear because you, you don't know. And I, you know what, I seen that I have seen that native speakers they make a mistake too with this. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, there's that famous song with um, Eric Clapton, "Lay Down Sally." 
Mm. It's not it's not that, that Eric Clapton took Sally and laid her down. What he's saying to Sally is, hey, Sally, lie down. Yeah, tu, uh, tumbate. Okay. Tumbate. Tum yeah, he, and he didn't because there's no object. So that, that song title is a grammatical mistake. Yeah. So lie, lie down, lie, um, lie also means mentira, no? but without the preposition. No? Lie down is tumbate, tumbate, lie down. So uh, why don't you lie down? ¿Por qué no te tumbas? ¿Por qué no te...? Or oh, maybe in South America it's recostarse, I think. So mm -hmm. why don't you lie down? Right? So... Um, that and it's, is, also, it's also a noun. Uh, I, I need a lie, da a lie down. A lie down. I, re I feel like a lie. I'm really tired. I feel like a lie down. Uh, or I'm, I'm going yeah. to have a lie down for five minutes. Yeah. So it can also be used as a, as a, as a phrasal noun. Yes. So lie down, lie down, and and then um, lying down. You can say lying down. I was lying down the in the German form. But then lay. Do not confuse with lay. That means colocar, uh, poner. I lay the table. Lay something on the table. Poner something. Lay lay the box down on the bed. Lay. lay yeah. yeah. Lay. L a y. Lay. There's, there's uh, any <clears throat> well, any comments about the prepositions? Or? Well, there's no preposition when it's lie down because okay. it's intransitive, as you said, yeah. and when yeah. it's l a y yeah. lay down, then it's intransitive. It has an object, and the same yeah. rules apply. Yeah, exactly. Lay l a y lay something down. Yeah, you need or to lay down something. Yeah, so when it's lay down, when you physically and you have an object to lay down, then it's you can play with the with the object. But when it's lie down, it's intransitive, so there's no object. Okay, so that's also another. Oof, very I, I need I need to lie down after all this grammar. So yeah. many phrasal verbs. I need to lie down. <laughs> Sleeping. So um, that's for you. We had this in the beginning when we spoke about waking up and getting up. And I said on Sundays, I really enjoy staying in bed, sleeping in, and not getting up immediately. I mean, during the week, we have work, we have to get up, we put the alarm, we wake up, we get up, we start doing things. On Sunday, I sleep in, I lie, um, lie in bed, lie in bed. I read a book, I listen to podcasts, I sleep a little longer. So to sleep in means to sleep longer or be in bed longer than you normally are. And it is inseparable, so you cannot separate it. I'm sleeping in today. Well, sometimes in Spanish we say the translation is pegarse de las sábanas, no? <laughs> the, yeah, because we don't have a very good translation for that. Is dormir um, más de la cuenta o dormir, yeah, so se me pegaron las sábanas, uh, I slept in, sorry I late, I slept in, uh, sometimes I remember in Madrid when we used to, I used to go to a company, to work in a company, I remember many times the excuse was, sorry there was a traffic jam, because we were people <laughs> late. Oh, there was a horrible traffic jump. It's very easy to do because there are always traffic jumps. So, and the real reason why they were late is was because they slept in. You slept. <laughs> yeah. You last. over overslept. Oh, that's true. It's oh, not the same, true. though. It's not the same. It's not the same. It's true. No, to oversleep is it's you did not, You did not yeah. hear. You did not hear the alarm. Yeah. And you went over the time, so you okay, overslept. Sleep, sleep in is voluntary. It's true, but then how do we translate that? It's, uh, it's, uh, está, está más rato en la cama. Yeah, but there's not one verb to say that. It's, 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 you have to explain. See, me queda, me queda o más tarde. Me queda o más See, tarde. Rafa, this is why we have phrasal verbs. Sometimes in yeah. Spanish, you don't have a verb. <laughs> it's not, yeah. That, you see, yeah, this is for sure, yeah. Sleep the, in. That's that's true. Uh, quedarse the, dormido. The, bueno, no, quedarse, no, hibernar, no. Quedarse dormido is not the same, Gemma. No, because quedarse dormido is uh, I, I fall asleep. 
I fell asleep, for example, me quedé dormido. I fell asleep. To, uh, I was talking to Craig and I was so tired that I fell asleep. <laughs> I can understand <laughs> that. <laughs> no, well, sometimes it happens no, when you're very tired. But uh, what we mean is that in, on Sundays, on Sundays, many times people uh, sleep in, meaning that they uh, stay in bed longer because they don't need to get up. That's the thing. And I was confusing. Quedarse en la cama. Yeah, Rafa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Quedarse en la cama. La cama. No Thank other, you, Rafa. There's no other uh, expression. Because mm -hmm. I, was, I was saying that was pegarse de las sábanas, but then I was corrected by Craig because I was, this is true, to oversleep. When you oversleep, uh, eso es pegarse de las sábanas. Se me han pegado las sábanas. Like we say in Spanish from Spain. Okay? So uh, another... Another one that I have it cut on here. Cut on, cut on is has two at least two meanings. First meaning is to understand. To understand, for example, you're not catching on, Craig. Huh? You're not yeah. catching. On. I'm very slow today. I I slept <laughs> no. in. I'm very slow. No. <laughs> so catching on. You're not really catching on. You know, we are talking about all these phrases. I'm not very quick. Yeah, and, and uh, well, the one that is not catching on is myself, actually. <laughs> I, I, to catch on, uh, so understand. It means to understand, but it's the second meaning, and it means to become popular. So, for example, um, there, there are things that catch on certain, certain songs, certain songs, for example, catch on. Um, because everybody starts um, listening to the song and because it has something catchy. We say, there's another word, adjective there. Catchy, it's very catchy. A song can be catchy. In Spanish, it's pegadiza, pegadiza. So if something is catchy, it's, you like it. So it catches on. Um, other things that can become popular, you know, series, probably series, it's catching on that series in, in, on Netflix. Scatting on, or um, other many things, you know, because we have social networks now, and it's very easy for things that you know people like to catch on, you know, to become popular. So, do you catch on now? <laughs> yep, I've I've <laughs> caught on. I caught on past things. I caught on. I think before we continue, Monica, there's a, a bit. I think there's a bit of confusion in in the chat with. Um, Oversleep and sleep in. Oversleep, no querías hacerlo. You didn't want to. You didn't hear the, the alarm. Yeah, you slept it, late. That's why in tarde en la cama. To yeah, sleep no, no, no. in, you decide. It's yeah. your choice, and you know you want to stay in bed more. So sleeping is voluntary, and oversleep is bad because you didn't mean to do it. That's the yeah, difference. Exactly. Uh, Gemma. Oversleep, pegarse de las sábanas. This is that's not voluntarily because it's pegarse las sábanas is that you don't you don't want to go you you did not hear the alarm clock uh, whatever you don't in um, sleeping quedarse en la cama like Rafa said she said she's a Spanish translator yes Rafa the official Spanish translator we point you. Dormido, to fall asleep, correct. And Edgar, what is he asking? Uh, we say, me quedé dormido, well, that means that is specific. Yeah, we say, me quedé dormido. Yeah, I, well, exactly, Craig. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. So with, with catch on, with catch on, there's another okay. meaning that's literal. Uh, oh, catch on. Yeah. I caught, I caught my, my arm on the yeah. microphone stand or... Mm -hmm. I caught my um, my finger on the, but on that's the computer it. screen. It's my like enganchar, enganchado. Pillarse, ¿no? Sí, te, me pillé la manga del, en español. Yeah. ¿Sí? yeah. Sí, engancharse también, pero it, it, it's And pillarse. then when it's that meaning, that literal meaning, you can separate the verb and the particle. So with Monica's example, um, you cannot separate it. With my example of literal, to catch on something 
you can catch your jumper, your sweater on a nail, for example. You can catch your trousers on something in the street. Okay, there's, there's, now we have the, almost the, let me see the, the common, catch on something, yes, catch on something. The, this is how they say it. Catch on something is pillarse algo. Se, se pillarse. Mm -hmm. uh, TV show, drugs. Oh. Mm. No. Um, um, you're no, thinking of engancharse. No, not in that meaning, Rafa. Catch on. That, that will be, um, what's the word in English for, um, to, to be addicted to something? Addicted. To be hooked. Is there, is there, to be hooked, yeah, to be hooked on something, Rafa, will be the phrasal verb for uh, addicted yeah i'm hooked on this tv show yeah, hooked. i'm hooked I, on heroin i'm hooked on marijuana yeah i'm right. hooked to this facebook live yeah i'm hooked on this video system yeah. Yeah, okay <laughs> there's one more stay in oh, yeah that one we is something it. that sadly we're doing a lot of these days with the coronavirus pan pandemic which is why we started doing these these Facebook lives to help you with your English because everybody is staying in at the moment. Quedarse en casa, the opposite of going out. Those two phrasal verbs are very common in everyday conversation. Uh, are you going out on Saturday? Well, no, I, I don't think I'll go out. I'll stay in. Quedar en casa. So it's very, very common to use that in everyday conversation to ask someone if they're going out or if they're staying in. Yeah. Stay in. We stay and in. Stay in is inseparable. So you stay in. Y punto. I'm staying in tonight. Or you could say where you're staying in. I'm staying in my flat. I'm staying in my house. I'm staying in to watch television. Okay. That's, that's it. it. Stay Shall we in go through the room. list again and tell them yeah, okay. uh, go one more time uh, if yeah, they remember I, these phrasal verbs? Okay. So. Uh, wake up, despertarse. Okay, now get up. Uh, get up, get up in the morning. Levantarse, get up uh, to go to work. Put on, not put on, put on, <laughs> ponerse ropa to put on. I put on my jacket before I leave. Okay. Come over, come over for coffee, or come round, come round for a beer, come round for a chat, come to my place, come out, come come over, or come round, come to where I live. Hang out. Where do you hang out, uh, or who do you hang out with, Greg? Greg? These days, uh, I hang out by myself. <laughs> <laughs> hang out with my, I don't with have my virtual <laughs> friend, Monica. <laughs> Oh, you hang out with your wife, too? We're, no, we're, yeah, 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 I hang out with my wife, but we're hanging out online. So yeah, that you online. Can hang out with friends. We're hanging out with Rafa. We're hanging out with Hema. Yeah, and so we're hanging out together. Good. Yes. And then we have workout. Yeah. To do exercise, to um, keep fit, get in shape, to do exercise, yeah. or to calculate, to yeah. find a solution to a problem, to work out. The bill, for example, to calculate how much you have to pay. Then you have fit in. That means um, encajar or to feel comfortable or uncomfortable in a group or in any situation. If you don't fit in, no encajas. You're not comfortable. If you fit in, for example, we fit in here. We all fit in here very well. Okay. As positive, comfortable. Uh, next one, get on get with. Llevarse bien, I get on well with my sister. I don't get on well with my boss, for example. For example. No, doesn't that's sense. not true. Oh, well, do, that, that I, also I get, get on with, with. It means also another second meaning. Don't forget that. Apañarse con algo. How are you getting on with your new job, for example, if you have a new job? Mm -hmm. Then we have tried out, that is to test something. I'm going to try out this new, uh, you could say, for example, ice cream. They're selling a new type of ice cream. And because I have a sweet tooth, I'm going to try it out. Try it out. Try it out. Try it out. Then we have pick out. 
to right. select, seleccionar. So in the morning when you get dressed, after you get up, after you wake up, you pick out the shirt to wear or you pick out the clothes you're going to wear during the day. So to choose or to select something is to pick out something or pick something out. To grow up. This is um, to be raised. Where did you grow up? For people, not for plants. Okay, remember that. Plants don't grow up. Only people grow up. And the remember the past tense, it's grew up. Oh, yeah, grown up, the past participle. Lie down, Craig. Lie down to rest, to be, to acost acostarse, do you say in Spanish? Mm -hmm. To lie down on, on the bed. It can also yeah. be a phrasal noun. I'm going for a lie down or I'm going to lie down for a few minutes. Just be careful that lay down needs an object. So you lay an object down on the table, for example, to lay something down somewhere. But the past tense of lie down is lay down. That's why it's confusing. You've got the two, the same spelling for two different verbs. Okay, sleep in. We said that it was quedarse en la cama. So usually on Sundays I sleep in. Okay, on Sundays I stay until later, like until um, probably nine, <laughs> nine o'clock. Do, do, do you sleep in on Saturdays? No, no, I work on Saturdays. Me too. I have class Saturday morning. Yeah. Nine, yeah. nine o'clock I start teaching. It's horrible. I start too at nine o'clock. It's true. Yeah. So I don't sleep on. So you you cannot be jealous. Yeah. Okay. Don't because I'm I'm working on Saturday. You should. So catch on, catch on, catch on. It's out of the moda. If you have a meme on YouTube, for example, and everybody's watching it and everybody likes it and everybody shares it, it catches on. It becomes popular. That's the idiomatic meaning, and the physical mm -hmm. meaning. You can catch clothes, for example, on something. So you can you can catch in gancha, you can catch your shirt on a nail or a screw or a hook or something. But also catch on means to understand. It also so means to understand. Yeah. Yes, thank you. It means to understand. Yeah, I, I I've caught on. I know what you mean. <laughs> Got it. Catch on. And then staying is what we're doing. We most of the time staying in because of the COVID. Uh, so Stay in. You need to stay is quedarse, alojarse. Stay in is uh, you don't go out, basically. I'm staying in. No, I'm not going out. So that's Every, it. Folks. Everybody's uh, staying in. Everybody's staying. Well, most people. I don't think everybody, but most people. Before so, we go, there's one final question from Rafa. He's asking about a uh, phrasal verb with hook. Mm, you see? In the uh, USA. Yeah, he says. Uh, there's a first verb with hook, but I know in USA the meaning is bad. However, in England it isn't. Um, Are you, maybe you're thinking of the word hooker, Rafa, which means hooker. prostitute, but that's not a phrasal verb. Put on no. is hooker in, <laughs> in USA, but it's not a phrasal verb. Not that I know. I was trying to think of a phrasal verb with hook that is... To, to be hooked yeah. on something is enganchado. So you can be hooked on drugs. You can be hooked on um, video games. You can be hooked on sex. You can be hooked on heroin. It's engan hooked on alcohol. That's a phrasal yeah. verb, to be but hooked he says on something. Hook he says hook up. To hook, hook up, up means to connect, to... Um, to meet someone let's hook up for a beer on friday let's hook up and hang out you could say let's hook up let's connect to have a connection between us let's, I don't think it's let's hook, up. hook up uh heat on uh, there's also another heat on uh, the uh, thank you Gemma. thank you for coming this is uh, the because in the shows with Craig does the show he has many visitors but I have very few on my page and well, he has it's growing it's growing there's lots of people here today oh and before we go be I must remind you or tell you that next week we're having a a Christmas special with yeah. Monica with and Lynn yeah. the three of us together so we will put all the details on social media, on Facebook, on Twitter. You know where to find us. And at the same time next Wednesday, 
we'll have a Christmas special with three of us together. So we're really looking forward to that. But you must bring your Christmas hats, even though we can't see you. We want to, we want you to wear your Christmas hats, have a Christmas drink, and we'll celebrate together online, and we'll hang out together. Okay. Be cool. So Christmas special for next week. Remember that. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Gemma. Thank you, Rafa. And the well, the, I think some of them left, but Sassenach and who was the other one? Edgar, Alar, Monse. Thank you very much. So we'll see each other next week. Yes. Next week Stay safe, everyone. Take care and have a good week. In the Marcion del Inglés Facebook. Okay. Bye bye.